Days, weeks, it's hardly different now. The world that's bled into ours has changed Earth. Weather, life, day and night, the air, everything is different. How sound carries and reverberates is different. In some areas, gravity is even different. It's as if madness has been made physical. I had the misfortune of running out of gas on the 491 a particularly desolate stretch of road in Arizona's desert. My parents had called the day before and told me to hightail my ass to their property in Montana. They didn't explain why, and they said they couldn't, but my mom sounded terrified, so I obliged. I'd simply forgotten to fill up the tank, and by the time I needed gas, there was none to be had. Cell service non-existent, all I could do was wait. An hour went by. Not one car passed. Two hours turned into four, turned into six. Just my luck. I beat my fists against the steering wheel and screamed. Physical exhaustion from the heat, stress, and fighting back tears made my eyes heavy. The inevitability of sleep waited patiently while I struggled to stay awake. A strange noise echoed through my skull, reverberating in my chest. Unearthly, the tone ignited primal instincts and I snapped awake, veins coursing with adrenaline. Rapidly blinking sleep away, I attempted to orient myself, surroundings unfamiliar. I was still in the front seat of my car, but a thick fog enveloped everything. The sun wasn't overhead, but it wasn't dark either. A dull, even glow seemed to light the fog, or like it was part of the fog. Again, the noise. Head on a swivel, I searched frantically for the source of the noise. It was like I had woken up in a bad dream. In the distance, I kept seeing these shapes, moving, but definitely not people. As soon as I'd blink, they were gone. I was sure the fog was playing tricks on me. Right about then is when everything went to hell. On the passenger side of my car, what I can only describe is some kind of a hand reached right through. It wasn't that the window was down or the door was open, I mean the hand came straight through the glass and steel. A dull greenish color, translucent and pulsing as if electrically charged. Looking at it hurt my head. I can only describe it as being similar to a deer's hoof but with at least eight worm-like tendrils squirming and searching for something to grasp. The scream I let out was uncontrollable as I slammed my body against the door, desperately fumbling for the handle. It opened and I sprawled out onto the pavement, scrambling backwards. The thing let out some kind of a grunting whine and I could see the rest of its horrible body. Bipedal, it stood on two tree-root-like legs that dug into the ground, writhing like a pit of snakes. The center of its body was a pole that split into a T at the top. Long, long arms flowed like wind socks. Its head was shaped kind of like a bird's skull, but with a long snout. Deep-set human eyes locked onto mine and mirrored the same look of fear. The dull, steady glow shined through the fog, illuminating the creature. For several moments, I remained frozen on the ground, right where I'd fallen. As soon as, whatever the hell that thing is, started making its way toward me by walking straight through the car, my mind screamed, FUCKING RUN, MORON! 
Adrenaline-fueled legs carried me off into the desert with no destination and almost no visibility. Stopping briefly a few times, those noises would echo out and fear-induced chills force me back into running for my life. I remember running through the fog for what seemed like an excruciatingly long time, but it's hard to gauge since the lighting never changed. Couldn't even see 40 feet in front of me. Gives the impression that you're not going anywhere. Something is wrong with the air, or whatever this fog is. Felt lightheaded and distant. More of those noises behind me, I could see shadows moving, following. Looking over my shoulder was a huge mistake. The second I turned back, the last thing I saw was a solid rock wall. Then, black. saved my life, I think. I don't know what I even just saw or where that fog came from. Oh, by the way, I'm Nate. You are welcome. I am Atsa. Atsa, do you know what's going on? Yes. This world and Nihodihi, the dark world, are becoming one. The dark world? The first world was one of darkness and mist. It was believed to be the beginning of this world. I believe it to be the end. Uh, okay. No offense, but I was hoping for more of a scientific explanation. Believe what you want, just do not come into contact with the Chindi. Ch Chindi? Bad spirits. Those things, as you call them. Thank you. 
<laughs> Hello, mortals. Disciple here. So, hope you like the new series. Working on the second part and future parts. And also working on the continuation of When the World Went Dark. Pretty excited about that. Uh, it's gonna be fucking cool. And you're gonna like it. Or I'll make you like it. <laughs> but, uh, no. Seriously. Ghost world. The whole world is like, there's ghosts and shit. So, <laughs> I mean, that's like, fucking Halloween as fuck. <laughs> that's what ghosts do. They like the <laughs> Anyhow, stick around. You know what I mean? We're making cool stuff here at this channel. We do audio animation. Myself and Mr. Black and Tracy's gonna be working with us and Sarah. And we do cool shit, you know? It's what we do. We make cool stories. So you can listen to them and like them and subscribe to our channels. You know what I mean? Just subscribe, man. Leave a like. Do some subscribing and then comment i guess tell me um i don't know something about how much you love me and my stories and my sense of humor and my awesome writing and my narrating voice and my disciple voice <laughs> all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go to sleep sweet dreams